Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. I'm Christopher Moldong, and I'm going to do a movie review for the Korean movie Default. Next time, I'll have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 37 and 38, an anime review for the Hunter Exam arc of Hunter by Hunter, and by special request, I am going to do an anime review for the anime Ruin Explorers. Just to tell you, if you guys want me to review any movies, anime, or something else, um, you know, leave a comment, give me a message, I will... I will review it when my friends ask me to do Ruin Explorers, and I will have a Ruin Explorers um, anime review coming up in the near future. And I'll also have a movie review for Aquaman. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. I'd really like to hear from you guys as well, so leave any comments. And make sure to su subscribe and share this channel as well. So the way that this is going to work is that I'm going to give a detailed recap of the movie Default. And then I'm going to give my thoughts on the movie. As far as an initial grade goes, I would give it something close to like a B plus, A minus. Um, it was kind of depressing, but it was a good movie. And it depends on the mood that you're in uh, to be able to watch and enjoy this movie. So... Um, probably like a B plus. So, let's go start off with the uh, movie review for Default. So, we're introduced to the financial crisis in Korea. Uh, it seems like it's all South Korea, by the way. So, when I say Korea, it's going to be South Korea. In 1997, we're introduced to Miss Han. She discovered that in a few days, like honestly seven days, Korea will go bankrupt. We're introduced to Gab Su, who owns a textile company with a friend. They owe money to Mr. Chung, the sand company, and the steel company. We're also introduced to Yun uh, Jung Hak, who we'll just call Mr. Yun, who predicts that Korea will go bankrupt in a few days. Uh, Ms. Han tells her superiors, including the Vice Minister of Finance, of the impending financial crisis. Ms. Han proposes to tell the public, but the Vice Minister of Finance refuses, telling her it will cause confusion. Back with Mr. Yoon, he quits his job. He works at a bank if, or investment firm. Um, I think it's a bank, actually. And makes calls to old clients of his. He tries to sell those who came. So he's making calls for a meeting with old clients of his. And he's trying to sell to those clients uh, of the... Pretty much of the impending crisis. Uh, with Gab Su, uh, he's called by Mr. Lee about a deal to sell his wares to a major retailer. When he goes to make the deal, he's told that he will be paid in a promissory note. Mr. Yoon, in his presentation, it's, it's separate from what Gab Su's doing, explains a negative relation between promissory notes and loans. To sum up, um, Merchant banks, like, they, the movie explains it really well, but merchant banks were giving out promissory notes. They seem like IOUs, more or less. And they're using the promissory notes as a way to pay off loans. And in order to make these, and the thing with loans, though, is that they're pretty much giving loans to anyone, and the loans are being used to pay off the promissory notes. And it was something to that nature. I, I could be wrong, but it really was just like a vicious cycle that honestly leads to doom, pretty much. So, um, but a lot of the, the crisis has to do with loans and, and these promissory notes. After the presentation, though, only two p people end up following him. One of them is an older gentleman, and one of them is like this young 24 year old kid with money who's really immature. Gab Su, after some hesitation, makes the deal and is paid in a promissory note. Ms. Han is in a meeting with her superiors, and the vice minister wants them to solve the crisis by going to the IMF. Ms. Han explains other plans. They decide other plans, which involves like getting money from like the U.S., getting the money from Japan, and, and fixing individual problems that's happening in this crisis. Instead of just a one-size-fits-all solution by going to the IMF. Um, 
they ex she explains that the IMF would pretty much just control uh, South Korea um, and not just well, not just give the money away. Hey, you know, they're going to want some sort of conditions that is going to negatively affect uh, South Korea. Uh, they initially decide not to go to the IMF. But after some time, they do decide to go to the IMF. The vice minister explains that this is the way to change Korea. They then lie to the Korean people about what is happening, pretty much telling them that they will not go to the IMF and that the economy is doing fine, <laughs> more or less, or it, it's fixing itself. Gab Su finds out that the company that Mr. Lee worked for went out of business. Him and his business partner owe money to a Mr. Chung. Um, they still owe money to these other people, but uh, are trying to find ways to pay it back. Um, businesses start filing for bankruptcy, including Daewoo, which is a company I remember, and other major companies and conglomerates. One of them is a retail chain that got Gab Su was contracted for. Everything is going as Mr. Yoon has predicted, and he starts buying a lot of real estate. Um, he also participates in some form of like reverse loan stuff uh, to, in order to get money. Uh, they don't ex exactly explain what he's doing, but he's getting a lot of money reverse in a reverse way that other people are doing it. Uh, Miss Han and her superiors meet with the IMF. They, the IMF have preconditions involving the top three elected officials before they even present their conditions. Their conditions are extremely, uh, yeah. So pretty much, it, it, it's just like they want to be able to talk to, like the top three elected officials, or who are like going one of the, the top three officials who are going to be president pretty much like the top three picks to be president pretty much um their conditions are extremely unfavorable and favorable to uh korea and pretty much allow foreign investors and businessmen to use predatory practices in korea Ms. Han tries to resist against this and even mentions that someone from the u.s department of treasury may be pulling the strings she was told to leave which is actually another precondition that they make. Or there is no deal with the IMF. She then leaves. Gabsu calls Mr. Chung, who he owes money to, and tells him that he'll pay him back, and looks at the promissory note as he tells him this. Mr. Yoon buys an apartment. Inside, someone has hung himself. Gabsu goes to the funeral of Mr. Chung. It's explained that someone paid him back using a useless promissory note, and Mr. Chung subsequently told his family to leave the house, and he hung himself. Ms. Han tries one more time to stop the IMF deal from going through. She has a conference to the media about what is happening, and just explains and gives them booklets about what's happening. The next day, nothing that she said or reported gets on any newspaper. The deal with the IMF then gets finalized. Gabsu's wife loses her job, or she's pretty much giving given a letter that is pretty much forced, um, forced quit, like a, a a way to get like force a person to quit, pretty much. Like it's pretty much assumed that she just loses her job, pretty much. Gabsu back home tries to kill himself, but stops at the last second. He goes to Miss Han, who turns out to be his sister, to ask for a loan. Uh, then when we go 20 years into the future, which is uh, 2017, Mr. Yoon is now the president of a company. Gab Su's uh, son calls Gab Su, and Gab Su tells his son not to trust anyone and only trust himself. It turns out that Gabsu owns a business. He actually yells at what looks like a Middle Eastern employee in the business. A Korean man and woman, who look like they're a part of some agency, approach Ms. Han about stopping another impending financial crisis to Korea. She agrees to help. At the end of the movie, we find out some information. Suicide rate went up to 42%. Over a million people were unemployed, and the effects of the IMF deal still lasted to this day. 
So, before we get into my thoughts on the movie, I'd like to plug my author's website at www.chrismaldon.com. And you can read a new blog post on there every week. Uh, for a sample of my writing, you can read my fancy short story, The Wizard, The Shadow, and the Tree, which is placed in the Dreamcast 1 writing contest. And a link to read it will be provided on the page description. Also, uh, do you like action, adventure, fantasy, crazy new characters, different worlds? Then buy my book, The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom, for just four dollars and ninety-nine cents via ebook on Amazon.com or on my author's website. Links to buy it will be provided on the page description. Please also subscribe to this channel as that really help me out. So, uh, some thoughts on the movie. Uh, let's start off with something, uh, some overall feelings about the movie. Um, I never watched a big short, but I heard enough about it. And what this sounds like is like the South Korean version of the big short. From everything I heard uh, about the big short movie, this seems to be like it. It is, as a movie overall, it's a good movie. Um, as you can tell... What the events of what happens happened in the movie. It's relatively depressing at times. It's sad, but it is uh, very eye-opening, very uh, informational. Uh, well done. It, it, it's just well done. You know, you you have like three, four different stories. I th I missed a story here uh, because it wasn't like it wasn't huge to like. There, there was a story with like this one guy's son and this one like like boys <laughs> men's club pretty much uh i i didn't really mention it. it wasn't really a big part of the story there's like three or four different stories going in and they all t do tied together uh some background information too this is actually the first korean film to feature a financial crisis theme based on l real life events um let's start with some of the characters miss han she han she hyun um, I don't know if she, ex you know, the fact of the matter is, I don't know which of these characters actually existed. I'm actually very curious to know if there was someone like a Ms. Han that, I mean, it's strongly implied that she could, her ideas could have pretty much stopped the crisis from happening. Still made South Korea sink to a financial low, but saved the country in a sense. You know, she was a financial analyst at the Bank of Korea. She was trying, you know, striving to do the right thing during the seven days before the country is declared a liquid liquidity crisis. And, uh, you know, she's smart. She's capable. She kept fighting. But she really was something of, like, the little guy. You know, she was... She kind of represented something of an everyman character. Um, you know, she definitely represented the worker, you know, the small business, and, and just the people of Korea. You know, she saw the crisis. She wants to help them. She had the information to help them. But she was, you know, stronger powers, uh, people in higher positions than herself pretty much went out to stop her in her tracks, even though it seemed like all of her ideas would have helped. Which makes me wonder, I don't actually know if she existed or not, because I, I kind of wonder if she was in, inserted into the story or, or not, as something like a fly in the wall, or, or not fly in the wall, but just like she would be like what, what the voice of reason would be during these while this stuff happened, I, I don't really know. Um, I'm very curious to know if she is kind of like the, you know, the uh, personification of the Korean people in a sense that's trying to fight back, or if she was actually a real person. I, I'm actually a bit curious. I didn't, I, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, you know, she tried to do the right thing. She kept fighting even though hope was lost. Um, she's smart. She knew what was going on. She's w willing to tackle the problem and, and face it head on. And, and unfortunately, there, there were just a lot of people on top. One of the worst being the Vice Minister of Finance. 
that were honestly didn't allow it to happen. And the Vice Minister of Finance just looks down on Ms. Han, sees the crisis as a way to fundamentally change South Korea, which really goes to show that there are, in a sense, and, and he can look at it in, in our, because we went through a bad financial crisis around like 2008, you know, with, with it was like a great recession where we had to like bail out, you know, automobile companies and banks and whatnot. We had our own thing going on as well. And, um, it, you know, it really goes to show that these people don't, you know, or have their own agendas. Obviously, he wants, he thinks that this is a way to kind of break everything down and start up anew and it's like and at the end of the day he always looked down on her and just called her like a bank teller and whatnot this minister of finance and, and the audience kind of knows it's like man this guy excuse my language is a dumbass i mean this guy is the dumbass and somehow he's in the higher position than the woman who is smart and actually knows what's going on and has real solutions. He wanted the one-size-fit-all solution of like, oh, let's just go IMF and get bailed out. She's like, no, 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 here's our problems. You know, we'll fix this, we'll fix this, we'll fix this, we'll do this and this as a way not to go to the IMF and just totally mess things up. You know, but it, it really goes to show bureaucracy... Um, some of these types of hierarchies that are not beneficial. And, and obviously, the pre the people that, you know, there are some people that will benefit, like uh, Mr. Yoon, who's that former banker who thinks the crisis is a lifetime chance for investment and whatnot. You know, you'll have some really smart guys like Mr. Yoon. I think in Big Short, there are a lot of companies that are a lot of, companies a lot of bit uh people a lot of people or not a lot there were a few people that knew that the a terrible financial crisis was coming and used it as an opportunity to make themselves rich mr yoon was that guy um but for every one mr yoon there's a you know a hundred uh gab suits you know um the the thing is uh, back with Mr. Yoon. You know what's really interesting with Mr. Yoon is that there was a scene where him and his two associates go to like his former bank and the the people were, were just, it, it was mob, you know, there's a mob there demanding money and whatnot. The young guy laughs, the young associate of, uh, who, who, who got into like Mr. Yoon's deal kind of laughs and is like, oh my God, the country's going to hell and he's cheering, right? But Mr. Yoon slaps the guy and it's just like, dude, you don't know me. We are not, don't act like we're friends, you know? And throughout the whole movie, you actually see that Mr. Yoon, even though he's like, he's diabolical in a sense, I think he, you know, there's parts of him, he didn't outwardly say it, but just the way he acted and the way he looked at things, you can tell that he's like, dude, this is terrible. Like, th th that's the impression I got from Mr. Yoon. It it's just like, what's happening in Korea is absolutely terrible. Yes, I am going to profit like none other. But it's like that two, th two things can be true at once. He's just like, I am going to profit off of this. However, I can still recognize that this is not good for Korea. This is not good for the people. And I, I did get that impression from him. You know, there are certain parts of the movie where he's just looking at things and it's just like, everything's going to hell, <laughs> you know, and, and I know everything's going to hell. It's not good, but I am going to stand uh, on top despite it all, because that was his mentality too, of just like, okay, I am going to, despite what happens, you, you know. You know, no one's going to get ahead of me. I'm going to be on top. And, and at, by the end of the movie, he does. He, he literally is at like this super high rise building in a, in a corporation or like business that he owns. And, and he knows like he's the guy on top, you know, I mean, he's driven by that fact. But yeah, throughout the movie, there's just hints where it's just like he knows that this is 
a bad state of affairs for Korea. And as far as a bad state of Korea uh, affairs, Gabsu, I mean, just wow. You, you, you know, like it, it kind of sucks what he did. Um, with the, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was Mr. Chung that hung himself. I, I, that, that was the thing. I don't think his associate went to jail. And I'm pretty sure it's Mr. Chung hung himself, but like, you know, he was about to uh, kill himself too. He was about to jump off of his apartment building, and uh, thankfully he stops and he 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 does he does whatever he can to get out of the situation. Um, in a sense, I guess that parallels Miss Han. She's trying to do everything she can. And fight as much as she can in order to get out of this terrible situation. And Gabsu kind of did that, but he kind of went about it. And, like, the, like he's a normal guy, and he kind of went about it the, the worst ways. You know, with the promissory note. He tried to kill himself and, and whatnot. It, it is just... Um, and by the very end, he, you know, he, he pretty much just begged his sister. Because that's the last thing he could do. It's just, hey, I, I can only just beg my sister to help him get alone. And it looks like he managed to actually pick himself back up. Because he's alive by the end of the movie and seems to actually still own his business. So, you know, he, he managed to survive by trusting in himself. But, you know, it's also like an implied... Um, unintended consequence of the IMF thing of, of what just happened where it's just like how jaded and disillusioned by the end of the movie at you know like 2017 Gabsu of the world uh, just don't trust anyone only trust yourself you know the world's like a terrible place you know and he's instilling that into his son who's gonna go out into the world now you know and, like, you know, there are those unintended consequences that's just going to happen. Like, you know, um, what's going to happen to the people? Uh, I mentioned Mr. Chung. I mean, he lent money to Gabsu and his associate the whole time. Tries to stay positive, you know. Um, the whole movie, he, he actually goes and, and gives beer to, like, Gabsu and his associate. Seemingly to, to try and collect the money. That he, he, he uh, lent them. And, and then when he says... And Gabsu tells him, look, we don't have the money. He's just, you know what? I'm not here for the money. It's all good. Everything's hard. I get it. Let's just be positive, you know? And then over the phone, he says the same thing. Hey, look, every, you know, let's just be positive. Let's just be positive. And uh, he's one that ends up hanging himself. I, I'm pretty sure he's the guy who ends up hanging himself. It wasn't too clear. Uh, it could have been his associate, but I don't think it was. I think it was Mr. Chung that ended up hanging himself. Um, that was sad. Yeah, uh, that was really sad. You know, um, you know, the guy who's trying to to stay positive through this immense adversity couldn't do it. You know, uh, he he just couldn't do it. And it was just Mr. Chung, you know, Gab Su, a lot of these people really do represent the, the, the worker, you know, of just like, you know, who's hurt the most? It's not, it, it wasn't Miss Han. It, it wasn't the vice minister of finance. It wasn't Mr. Yoon. Um, we didn't get to the managing, managing director of the IMF yet, who was played by Vincent Cassell. But, um, you, you know, it, it was the Gabsu's. It was the Mr. Chung's. Gabsu's associate ends up going to jail because he couldn't pay for, uh, uh, pay back his loans and, and pay back who he owed. You know, who, who suffers? It's the people. He, you know, at, at the end of the day, what happens on, up top, they're not going to suffer. You know, they, they kind of rule with their scepters, more or less, making decisions on behalf of the people. But it's the people that suffer at the end of the day. And that really goes to show. 
who had uh, Vincent Cassell, he, he made all these preconditions and conditions um, so that, you know, South Korea will get this loan. He may even be working in line with the U.S. Um, it's just shady, you know, I mean, it, it, I, I, I mean, he, he really, rep I mean, he represented everything that was wrong, like, he represented just, like, the, cr like, cronyism, I mean, he was just kind of, like, the representation of, of just, like, power and greed and, and cronyism, you know, uh, it, it was just, like, Hey, I balls in my court. You do what I want. I have the power, and I'm going to enforce this power onto this country. You know, and um, you guys can't do anything about it. You know, and, and it, it's just a sad, sad state of affairs. Um, th there, there's just so much to this movie. You know, you, it, it really is like the worst of the human condition. You know, especially when things go bad, you will see the worst of the human condition. I, I mean, if, if this movie has taught taught us anything, you, you know, that's what it is. That's what happens. The politics of it all. And the vice minister of finance, he's looking at this situation. He's like, well, well we got to think about the election that's happening. You know, we can't tell the people what's going on. They're going to be in the state of confusion. <laughs> and it's like, okay, the events happen, happened. And then the people ended up becoming it, getting into the, getting laid off by the the millions apparently, you know. And then there's a state of confusion in a sense that like there's such a high you know high suicide rate. I I, I mean it, it's like in in the sense it, it's like it really goes to show another part of the human condition. It is hard. To be a courageous human. It really is. Miss Han was like the only one that was truly courageous here. Gab Su, You know, he's just a normal guy on, down on his luck. Cannot do the courageous things. Vice Minister of Finance cannot do the courageous things. No one can tell uh, the managing director of the IMF to go, you know, to... Uh, pardon my language, but... I, well, I won't cuss. To go F himself, you know? The only person I was able to was Miss Han, and, and it really goes to show that like um, it's hard to be courageous. And quite honestly, during times of hardship, it is hard to do the right thing. Uh, I mean, it really is. Um, and there are consequences to what hap to what ha like the politics and the bureaucracy and whatnot. There are consequences to other people and a lot of people, and that's the thing. And it, it's a really unfortunate thing. It's it's unfortunate how easy it is to manipulate people. I I, I mean, once again, it, it is the worst of the human condition in this movie. You know, during times of crisis and whatnot, it is just really easy. To manipulate people, it is very easy for people to do bad things. Um, it is, you know, some people will during times of crisis will be opportunistic. Uh, other, you know, um, and very few people will be courageous. That's the thing uh, with this. So, great movie. Uh, I, I thought it's a really good movie. Like I said, it, it's not a happy movie. It's a very informative movie. It's well acted. It's well well done. Um, it's a good lesson for everyone. I, I think anyone who's seen The Big Short would probably like this movie. It's very serious though um, as well. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, I would definitely recommend this movie for sure. So that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel. Thank you for listening to this movie review. Next time, I'll have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 37 and 38, an anime review for the Hunter Exam arc of Hunter by Hunter, an anime review for Ruin Explorers, and a movie review for Aquaman. Thank you, and until next time.